Mausoleum is a 1983 horror film directed by Michael Dugan and starring Bobby Breezy, Marjo Gortner, Norman Burton, Maurice Sherbani, Laura Hippie, and Lawanda Page. These titles should be in 3D. Susan is mourning her mother's death with her Aunt Cora. Let's go. I'm not going home. I'm going to your house. That's right. My house is going to be your home until you're old enough to inherit your mother's estate. She says fuck going home and runs off. Not Susan! Oh, God! Please, not Susan! Go for the Oscar. This would be spookier if it wasn't broad daylight. Susan then meets the title character of the film. Is that a mausoleum or is that Cheech and Chong's house? I bet that's real rain. The fog budget was wild in this thing. Susan goes in, eventually finding a grave, and this guy comes out of nowhere to attack her. What a hothead. Oh, rats. The crypt opens and somebody needs a manicure. Then there's a time jump and we go directly to some exposition. Believe me, there's nothing wrong with Susan. Look, Simon, what happened to my sister and to the Nomad family is not my imagination. Here's my father's diary. We rented this goddamn cemetery and we're getting every penny's worth. Once having left the mausoleum, the demon is one with the possessed and can only be returned to rest by the firstborn having reunited the demon with the crown of thorns. So according to this book, she's possessed, she's been possessed for years, but nothing's happened yet. So what's the problem? Oh, it was all a dream. Just me, the creepy gardener. Fine. I think I must have had a nightmare. Listen, uh, why don't we get out of here and go down to the club and do some dancing? The club? This is going to be good. Mm. Fucking pervert. They go clubbing and Kenny Rogers is getting some grief. Where? Here. Just looking at the dance floor. You were looking at her, weren't you? And this is the last time you're going to do this to me. Will you take me? You look at me. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but you're always bitching about the same old shit. Oliver gets called away, and Kenny Rogers asks Susan not to take her love to town. Susan does not respond in the positive. Well, guess what? The contracts are ready, and the clients are in from New York, and we have to go. I'm sorry. Well, that whole trip was pointless. What an asshole. Holy shit! Mr. Farrell around? No, he's at work, Ben. What do you want? Come on at last. What did you say, Ben? Is everyone in this movie a sex predator? There's some psychic stuff and, huh? Nudity! Susan spends the day seducing the gardener and they eventually end up in a shed to get it on. Had some women in my time. Some of them real pros. You know what I mean. But, uh... <laughs> as hell you beat them all a postcoital pep talk is always the way to go the gardener wants some more action so he gets forked <laughs> then oliver gets home and more getting it on occurs the next day aunt cora arrives and looks for susan then she finds her Holy shit! Mmm, ribs. 
That night, Oliver gets freaked out over Susan sitting in a rocking chair and calls Dr. Andrews. Look, Oliver, it's very late. I think it best we all get some sleep. Have Susan come to my office tomorrow at 2.30, okay? In other words, fuck off. In case you came in late, here's a recap. Later, Elsie. Listen, when I get back, we'll discuss it. But just look after Susan, will you? But I always do. Yeah, but today more than any other time. Now, we'll talk when I get back, I promise. You just gave her a death sentence. Elsie goes upstairs and has the good sense to not stay up there. She has a drink and decides to do her duty. <laughs> nah, fuck this, I quit. Susan goes to see Dr. Andrews who immediately gives her downers. Simon, I really don't need this. All right, then will you do something for me? What's that? Will you let me try hypnosis? Hypnosis two movies in a row! That doesn't look comfortable. Want to sleep? That's right. Let him go. Let them go. Let them go. Give in to it. Give in. Give in. Let them close. This sounds like an obscene phone call. Now you're going deep. Now it really sounds like an obscene phone call. Here's some acting, I guess. Oh, oh I hate that car. I don't want to go with you. I don't like you. I hate you. Dr. Andrews looks pretty chill to be face to face with a fucking demon. That was refreshing. Roni. Roni, I've got a problem. No, not another dead hooker. Tree delivery. Things escalate quickly, then the delivery guy makes a phone call. I don't know what his problem is. It's not his phone bill. Oliver returns, and this looks suspicious. Oliver, can't it wait till morning? No, it can't wait till morning. We have to talk about it now, Susan. I'm just too tired now. It'll have to wait till morning. So the diagnosis is a crown of thorns. It'll neutralize the possession. Who is it? Who... Oliver. Sorry to barge in on you like this, Simon. That's... Hey, Ollie, listen to this shit. Is Craig Watson following her? Go home. I'll be there tonight. But don't get too close to Susan. Susan pulls a five-finger discount at the art gallery, and this guy is very diligent at his job. Damn it, lady, bring it back here. It isn't mine. <laughs> Loss prevention is a rough fucking business. With all these witnesses, the cops should be there shortly. Susan, you have to communicate with me. If you don't, I can't help you. Simon can't help you. No one can help you. Fuck Simon. Whoa, F word. Remember what they said, don't get too close. <laughs> Acting. I guess he got the crown or whatever. I can't fucking tell. Are those little demons for tits? Dr. Andrews arrives and discovers that Oliver was thinking with his dick. He discovers Susan in a secret room filled with bodies and after some monologuing places the crown on her head. The end. Nope, we need to go to the mausoleum because that's the title of the fucking movie. There's some dead guy in there and he looks good for 1680. Simon, I don't understand. Don't worry, nobody does. Then they leave. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Why? 
What the fuck? John Carl Beekler? Robert Burns? I guess we know what the only two good parts of this movie are going to be. Mausoleum is a rough film, but that may be because it could have been a money laundering operation. But who am I to point fingers? The film is too long and drawn out, and the characters are written to be just stupid enough to get killed. Except for Elsie, of course, who gets the fuck out of Dodge. There's a ton of exposition in this thing, but nothing makes sense. We also get that great cliche where the family name Nomad is actually demon spelled backwards. Pat yourselves on the back, screenwriters. Good job. Everything in this film is amateurish, except for the effects and the production design, which is pretty good considering they probably had zero dollars to work with. This is your standard 1980s horror film that was pumped out to make as much money as it could in the few drive-ins that were still operational in the grindhouses. Then we'll just throw it on the video, put it on a shelf with a great cover, and the 10-year-olds will rent it. And then hopefully, we'll get a sweet cable deal in the end. Mother, father, sucker got away.